Hey Code Crew, today I'm going to show you how to make an app using Xcode for Windows. Now, if you do a search for this topic, you'll find a lot of articles and videos saying how you can't get Xcode on Windows, and then they're going to proceed to give you a list of alternatives. Now, it's true that there's no Windows version of Xcode, but I'm not going to leave you high and dry. Today, we're going to dive a little deeper, and I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up what I think is the best solution for beginners who are non-technical and who want to dabble in iOS app development without committing too much of an upfront investment. Investment. All right, stay tuned. Welcome to Code with Chris, the place to be if you want to learn how to make an app. I'm Chris, and I hear that you want to learn iOS app development and you're using a PC. Well, you're not alone. In fact, the most trafficked page on codewithchris.com is my article on Xcode alternatives on the PC. In fact, I get questions about how to run Xcode on Windows every single day. So in 2019, I decided to dive a little deeper to figure out what's the best solution for Windows users. And what I found is that there is no universal one size fits all best solution. Instead, the best solution depends on what your goals are and how technical you are. For example, if you're 100% committed to doing iOS app development, then I would say go buy a Mac or go borrow someone else's Mac or get access to a Mac computer lab. There really is no better way to do iOS app development. Uh, if you're not 100% committed, but you do have a technical background, then building a Hackintosh or using virtualization software like VirtualBox to install Mac OS on your PC could be a good solution. However, I know that a lot of my audience are non-technical beginners who aren't sure if iOS app development is for them yet, and they wanna try it out and see if that's something that they like. If that sounds like you, then I would recommend getting access to an actual Mac. Maybe your friend has a MacBook that you can borrow. Maybe your local library has access to Macs. Now, the most important thing is that you can install Xcode on those machines so that you can actually try out iOS app development and see if it's something that you want to do long term. Now, if you can't get your hands on a Mac, the next best solution is to rent remote access to a Mac. There are services out there which allow you to connect to a Mac over an internet connection, and you're gonna see that Mac's desktop on the desktop of your PC in a window, and you can control that Mac like that. Now, this is not as ideal as actually having access to a Mac because there is a little bit of a lag as you're controlling that computer through an internet connection. But compare this with the actual investment of buying a Mac upfront, which starts at $800. Now, if you're anything like me, you've probably bought a ton of stuff in the past that you thought you would use a lot more than you actually did. For me, gym memberships come to mind. So instead of investing an arm and a leg buying a Mac up front, I would first invest into one of these remote access Macs just to learn the basics of app development first to see if it's something that you like and you wanna do long term. The service that I like the most is called Mac Stadium. It's because they've got the newest Mac and they've even been featured by Apple on stage. So here's what I'm going to show you how to do. Step one, I'm going to show you how to sign up for Mac Stadium. Step two, we're going to connect to your Mac from Windows with a piece of software called Tight VNC, which is free. Step three, we're going to download Xcode. And then step four, we're going to launch Xcode and build our first Hello World app. The first step is to sign up for Mac Stadium. Now they have a free trial, but it's not very long to be honest. I like their service the best, so I reached out to see if I could get something special for you guys. And in fact, they gave me an exclusive coupon code where you can use to get 50% off your first month. That's gonna be enough time for you to go through this video, go through my beginner video series where you're gonna learn the core app development skills and also enough time to get a ton of practice in. And by the end of that first month, you'll be able to know if iOS app development is something that you want to continue with and you can just continue using the Mac Stadium service or try to find access to another Mac or to buy an actual Mac. And if you find out that it's not something that you like, then hey, it's better than having bought a Mac up front, which then you're gonna have to sell, right? So all you have to do is visit codewithchris.com slash MacStadium, and then you're gonna click on the Start My Free Trial button. You're gonna go through all of the steps, and before the last confirmation button, there's a checkbox which you can enable to enter in a coupon code, and you're gonna use the coupon code CODEWITHCHRIS. 
Now I do want to mention that if you do use this coupon code to get 50% off your first month, then I'm going to get a small kickback at no extra expense for you. So it's going to be a win-win situation and thank you so much for supporting my channel. Now we're going to jump on the computer and I'll show you how to sign up for Max Stadium. So after you go to codewithchris.com slash Max Stadium, it's going to bring you to this page and you can get a little more information about Max Stadium and about the Max that they have. When you're ready to sign up, on the right hand side, click on start my free trial. And this is kind of the lowest uh, tier Mac that they have. It's gonna be enough for iOS app development, but it's also going to be at the lowest cost for you. So click on start my free trial. It's gonna allow you to configure your Mac. You can leave it as it is. Any upgrade that you do is going to add to that monthly cost. Now there's nothing that you can remove that will lower the monthly cost because this is kind of the base configuration, but it's gonna be enough for us. So once you're satisfied with this, click on the orange start trial button on the right hand side. And here you're going to just enter in some account information. You're gonna create a brand new account. So for me, I've already got an account. So I'm going to just go ahead and log in. For you, you'll probably be creating a brand new account down there. So here's where I want to point your attention to. Here you're gonna add a payment method, but before you click on that orange button, make sure that you check off, I want to use a coupon code, and then here, put in code with Chris in all capital letters, and then submit card payment or whatever that orange button says to proceed. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get the one day trial and then you're going to be uh, paying 50% off for that first month. And after you submit your order, it's going to take about an hour or two for them to set up your Mac. They're gonna send you an email right away telling you that that's what they're doing. And you're gonna have to wait a couple of hours for them to actually set it up. You're gonna get another email at that point with a link and you're gonna click through that link, which is going to bring you to their ticketing system and you're gonna be able to see your login credentials for your Mac. Now we're going to connect to our Mac using Tight VNC. In your browser, go to tightvnc.com and you're going to, uh, let me go back to the homepage here, and you're gonna find this link called Get Your Free Copy of Tight VNC. Click that. On this page, you're gonna be able to download an installer for Windows. Now, if you're not sure if you should download 64-bit or 32-bit, just go to your about your PC and scroll down a little bit and you're gonna be able to see. So here, system type for me is 64-bit operating system, so I'm gonna download the 64-bit version. So let's go ahead and download that installer for Windows. I'm gonna save it right there. It's a really small download. And the reason I'm showing you each of these steps is because um, this installer actually has a couple of options that we want to configure. So go to next, read the terms of agreement if you want and accept them. And here you wanna choose the custom installation type because what I want you to turn off is the tight VNC server. We don't need that for this purpose. Um, that's for actually allowing uh, other computers to control your computer remotely. That's when you would wanna install tight VNC server and set that up and get that running. All we wanna do is use the tight VNC viewer which allows us to connect to another computer. So click on next, and these options are fine. Click next and click install, click yes, and then we finish. All right, so now we're going to launch the program. Uh, it might be on my desktop. Oh, there it is. And all we have to do is specify the remote host IP address, which is going to be in that installation ticket after they've set up your Mac. So I've already got it saved here in my configuration, but if you don't, you're gonna to want to jump into that installation ticket to grab that IP address, and you're gonna to wanna to keep that password handy too because you're gonna to need to use it right here. Now, I don't remember mine, so I actually need to log in and get it. All right, so if you don't see any uh, support tickets, keep in mind that there is a toggle here, so you can toggle open and closed. So maybe it, the ticket was closed, so you're gonna need to check the closed status. So there's mine. 
I'm going to scroll up and grab my password. I'm going to copy and I'm just going to paste it here and click OK. And then it's going to connect to our Mac. There it is. Now, this password for your administrator is the same password you just used to connect to this Mac. And you might try to paste your password right here, but it's not going to work because the password that you copied is on your Windows clipboard, not on your Mac clipboard. So here, you're actually going to type it in manually. And if your screen, if you can't see the whole desktop through this window, what you can do is click these zoom buttons right here, these scale in and scale out. So you can kind of scale it so that uh, you can see the entire desktop. And you can also click on this full screen button as well. All right. so. Let me type in the password before I full screen it because otherwise I won't be able to see it. All right, so as you can see, I was playing around on the Mac, but the first thing you'll want to do is actually go into the Mac App Store and download Xcode. So uh, you should be able to see the Mac App Store icon right here, and you're going to click on it. Now you're gonna notice a little bit of a lag as you're using your remote Mac. And this is what I mentioned before. You know, ideally you can get access to a Mac so that you can try out iOS app development. But if you don't, if you can't, and you don't wanna buy a Mac, this is kind of the next best solution. So in order to download Xcode through the App Store, you're going to need an Apple ID, which is free. Um, and instead of signing up for it through your Mac here, I would go back to your Windows desktop, just visit apple.com and up here, click on sign in. And obviously you don't have an Apple ID yet, but there's going to be a link there that says don't have an Apple ID, create one now. So click that and you're going to be able to create an Apple ID for free. And after you have your Apple ID, jump back into your Mac and log into the App Store. Um, and that's going to allow you to download Xcode. So search for Xcode, hit enter, it's gonna bring it up, and then you're going to click on get and then install. So for me, it's already open. Downloading and installing Xcode is probably gonna take at least an hour, so I would just you know, go grab a coffee, go do something else, and then come back, because Xcode is quite a large program. So once you've got Xcode installed, just launch it, and you're going to see something like this. And in fact, I'm just going to full screen um, my window. Take note of this keyboard command to get out of full screen. Control, Alt, Shift, and F. So at this point, we're just going to create our brand new Xcode project and we're going to do a simple Hello World demo. So we're going to choose a single view application and you're, you're going to have to have a little bit of patience working with Xcode through this a remote connection because there is a bit of a lag, unfortunately. But it's still going to give you a chance to see if app development is for you. So I had to enter a product name and change some of these. Organized nation, sorry, organization name, you can just put your own name. And organization identifier is com dot, uh, what your name would be without spaces. And I would uncheck unit tests and UI tests. Click on next, and then we're going to uncheck create Git repository on Mac. I'm gonna create it on the desktop. Now in this demo, I'm just going to build a basic Hello World app, but if you want a lot more instruction and a lot more um, teaching, you should check out my beginner video series because this video is really just to demonstrate using uh, Mac through Windows. So I would go into the storyboard right now. And then we would go ahead and click on this icon up here. I'm going to add a label as soon as our view shows up. Is it there? Oh, it's still loading. Okay, we've got it. So we're going to go ahead and click this button up here. Type in label. So I already have a label here and I'm just gonna click and drag it onto the view. All right, so I'm, I'm holding the mouse here while the screen updates. I'm gonna release it, put it right there. And now I'm gonna click on this inspector while I have that label highlighted. 
and then I'm going to put my text box in there and I'm going to say hello world press enter and I'm going to center this label by adding two constraints so click open this menu here we're going to add a horizontal in container and vertical in container let's wait for that checkbox to appear before I click add constraints and then we're going to add these two constraints that's going to center the label onto the screen and then I'm going to run my project and the simulator is going to show up now the first time you're going to run your Xcode project that simulator is going to take a long time to show up so be patient subsequent times will be a little bit faster and also that simulator might be way way too big all you have to do is hold down alt and press one two or three to change the zoom level to get it to a size that you'd like or you can uh, click on the simulator and then click on window and you can change the zoom level as well so you know the it's command one two or command three but on the windows keyboard it'd be alt one or alt two there we go. I've created a handy Xcode cheat sheet specifically for Windows users. So it's got keyboard shortcuts and reminders for a PC keyboard. To download it, simply click below or check the description for a link. Now that you have access to a Mac, it's time to learn the basics of iOS programming with my beginner video series. It's been viewed by over 1.2 million people and tons of success stories have come out of it. Simply click on the thumbnail and I'll see you there.